Hello, I'm uh, Captain Scott McCoy. I'm an aircraft commander, instructor pilot here on the C-5M out of uh, Dover Air Force Base, Delaware in the 709th Airlift Squadron. So I'm gonna be uh, walking around my aircraft and giving you a quick tour. So as you can see on the side of the aircraft here, we have uh, both the Air Mobility Command and Air Force Reserve Command logos on the side. That's because we are a tenant unit at Dover Air Force Base. We share these aircraft with the active duty and the Air Force Reserves. So I'm actually personally a reservist, so this is a part-time job for me and uh, fly for the civilian airlines on the uh, commercial side. Well, as we talked about earlier, like we're currently in the level knelt configuration, so you can see the nose gear is slightly retracted, and the main landing gear back there is also squatted down close to the ground, which gives us better access to loading cargo through the front and back of the aircraft simultaneously. Uh, there's 28 total tires on the C5. There's four up front on the nose gear, then there's four main bogies in the back. Each one has six tires on it. The large aircraft, obviously, we have a 223 foot wingspan, so taxing it around is pretty cumbersome. Uh, we mitigate a lot of that by the fact that our aft gear can actually caster. So when we go around a turn, we have a switch up top when I'm driving the aircraft that will free up the aft gear and let them kind of spin like, uh, like the front wheels on a shopping cart. So that'll let us make really tight turns of the aircraft, uh, so tight that we can actually do a 180 degree turn and 150 feet wide runway. So. So the M model is the modernized version of the C5. So we got these new General Electric CF6 motors, which increased our overall thrust by about 28%, I believe. So it's essentially like getting an extra engine thrown on the jet from the old CF39s. So that uh, increased our performance, our climb capability, our range, and our fuel economy. So obviously you see we have uh, very large wings. The fuel tanks are all stored in the wings. So our max fuel capacity, uh, it's about 50,000 gallons, but uh, we use pounds as our measurement. So our maximum fuel load is 332,500 pounds of fuel. And uh, the range we get out of that varies on the winds, uh, the temperatures, and obviously how much cargo we have on board. And ironically enough, that was our fuel load coming here from Hawaii down to Avalon was 330,000. So just shy of our maximum fuel load to get down here. As you can see here, this uh, stainless steel barrier here with the kind of uh, ash on the side, that's the exhaust port for our APU we talked about earlier. That's the auxiliary power unit that provides electrical uh, uh, system power and bleed air for our air turbine motors and our other components we need on the aircraft. You can see the uh, T-tail, which uh, I believe is the tallest point at the Avalon Air Show right now. It's about 72 feet, I believe, in the air once we're in the unknown configuration. Uh, we lower ourselves 28 and a half inches uh, from the, uh, our normal ride height, so slightly shorter, about two and a half feet shorter than it, than it normally is, but so this is the aft ramp back here. So when we're in flight, uh, this is actually considered a pressure door. So when it opens up, or when it closes up, I should say, uh, it seals up, as you can see along that light blue uh, ridge line there. And so this whole aft portion of the aircraft is unpressurized. And ironically enough, the uh, unpressurized version of our empennage, it's called, has the same volume as a C-130 cargo compartment. So that's this unused, unpressurized air that's just dead space, essentially. Hi, I'm Master Sergeant Claycomb. I'm a flight engineer for the 709th airlift on uh, the C-5 Super Galaxy. And we talked uh, briefly about the outside with our AC, Captain Scott McCoy, and then I'll show you inside. Hi, I'm Major Gene Pasker. I'm the evaluator pilot C5 Galaxy, We're based out of Dover, Delaware. We're a reserve crew. There's 20 of us on our crew that came down here for the air show. And we're going to give you a little uh, tour of the front cockpit here. Four separate throttles to work for the engines. And you can see they're interconnected on both sides. So we can fly the airplane from either side. Up front here we have the suite of our glass cockpit, the avionics modernization program which was done for the C5 fleet uh, around 2006. Here we have a steering wheel. <laughs> this is what we use to steer the airplane while we're on the ground. The rudder is only effective after around 60 knots so this, this will steer the airplane while we're on the ground. We have a hydraulics control panel up here. It's mostly controlled. All our systems are mostly controlled by the flight engineer who sits back at that panel. We control our fuel systems, pressurization, hydraulics, electrics. Here we have the engine start switches. It's as simple as one click, it starts the engine. It's fully automated digital engine controls where you just turn it and let the computer start the engine for you. Up here we have fire handles. 
That way if we had an engine fire, or we had to shut down a, a, an engine in emergency, pull that handle and it cuts off all power, hydraulics, electrics, everything, the engine shut it down. And this button right behind here is uh, connected to a nitrogen bottle. If we had a fire, press that button and it'll shoot nitrogen into the engine to uh, put the fire out. And over here, this is our flap handle. This moves the, the flaps on the wings from zero to 100%. And as you can see here, the kneel light is on. That means we're in our, uh, the airplane is knelt to the ground. Normally the airplane is, the belly is maybe about five or six feet off the ground. We're knelt for our display today, so we opened up the front visor. We have the back opened up. We're knelt to the ground with the ramps down so we can walk straight through and load cargo that way. Now I'll pass over to Master Sergeant Rich Claycomb and he can show you the flight engineer's panel and the rest of the aircraft. Here we're back, you talked about the uh, flight deck a little bit, and then we came down the hallway, and on this side we have all the avionics behind this wall, and then on this side we have all the, this is the crew bunk area where if we take a break you can take a nap, or if you don't feel good you can go to sleep, um, other stuff. This is where one of our load masters will sit at this table here, and we'll do checklists, paperwork, and then after we take off this is where we we can play games, you can eat, relax, whatever whatever you want. We have a curtain up here, basically to, to close off the area during flight, where at nighttime, you, if we got stuff going on back here, we don't shine light to the front. And then um, same when up front we're doing something and then people are back here sleeping, we can close that off. If you come back here, we also have another department where we can close this off if you need to. And back here is the courier. A lot more seats for uh, some some extra air crew. We have a crew chase to fly with us. They'll come back here. We have circuit breaker panels here, and then everything back here is this is going to be what supplies bleed air and air air conditioning and pressurization to the airplane. Yeah. All right, here now we're down in the forward part of the compartment, cargo compartment. We have the the ramp where you can drive everything up and down. Um, multiple configurations. We can do forward kneel level kneel or aft kneel. Today we're at level kneel so we can go through the whole airplane, which is the most unique part about being level kneel, is being able to walk through the whole airplane. And then and in the cargo we have 36 pallet spots and plenty of room for people. And we'll just keep going through and we'll go up into uh, the troop compartment. So in this area here, our airplane actually has four hydraulic systems to control the flight controls and gears and everything else. And these are all the hydraulic compartments. Anytime we need to button any valves or do any servicing, this is the hydro. So here we're walking to the back of the cargo compartment. This is the, the down ramp where you can just, same thing as the front. There's a lot more clearance in the front for taller cargo, but we can still do a lot of stuff back here as well. And then next we're gonna go up into the troop compartment. And then here we are in the, this is the back of the airplane. This is the troop compartments where all the passengers sit when we fly with uh, duty packs or just civilians trying to come along. And the seats are facing the other way. Everyone thinks that it's uh, very interesting. And we have 75 people that we can, including our uh, load masters that we can fit back here. And sometimes we'll have crew come back here if they're don't have any duties during flight, they'll come back here and hang out with, take a nap. And then as we go up front here, we have two doors. This will be our main servicing door. This is where the ladder comes in. If you ever take a ride on the C5, this is where you'll come in and out. And then we have three other hatches where they're all only for emergency. If there was an emergency on a plane, we'd use those. But normally this is our number one door. And then this is our back alley area. And this is where our load masters will sit when we're carrying passengers overlook everybody. And then back here is unpressurized. This is what we call the hayloft area. So back here, we can actually walk through here and actually climb up to the top of the T-tail for maintenance if we need to do any kind of maintenance inspection or if you're at an air show and you want the best seat of the house, it's the way to go. <laughs> I had a great time down here at Avalon and uh, it was a real honor to come down. It's been absolute my pleasure, pleasure my crew to come down. So. Thanks a lot for coming by and taking tours of the C5 and allowing us to come down to the air show. Hoping to be back sometime soon. <laughs>